Hello friends, my name is Chinmay Deshpande. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about a topic, reactive power control, in that the subtopic is loading capability curve of a synchronous generator. Now, every device has a some constraints within which it should be operated. An alternator delivering a power to grid has to be operated within some limits. The capability curve of a synchronous generator is nothing but a boundary within which the machine should operate safely. It is also called as operating charge or capability charge. Now whenever the synchronous machine is connected to an infinite bus, its speed and the terminal voltages are fixed and unalterable. That is, it is not going to change. Now let us assume that generator is delivering a power so that a certain angle that is delta will be existed between the terminal voltage which is denoted by Vt and generated voltage EI of the machine. So let us consider this diagram. This is your EI. This will be your voltage Vt. We can say that terminal voltage. Now J into XD is the reactance. IA is the current which will flow through this. So how I can write a mathematical expression? EI will be equal to Vt plus IA into bracket RA plus J into XD. Now if I neglect this term RA, then I can write the expression as EI will be equal to Vt plus IA into J XD. Now it is very easy to draw a phasor diagram from this. So this is Vt is the reference. IA, this IA will be the current. So I will show it. This IA will be the current. Angle between this is nothing but your theta. Now as RA component is not there, so we can show this IA into XD component. And if I join this, then what we will get is nothing but EI. The angle delta, the angle is existed between your EI that is generated voltage and terminal voltage Vt. Now I will draw here dotted line. I will extend this dotted line here. I will extend first this dotted line here. So this will be your theta. This angle is 90 degree. So this angle will be what? This is your 90 minus theta. Now if I draw a line here, dotted line, then what it indicates, this will be your IA XD into cos theta. Because if you see here, this will be your theta. So this is also opposite angle. So if this is your theta. This will also be your theta. So this is your what? This will be your adjacent. So IA XD cos theta. And this will be your opposite. That is IA XD into sin theta. Now here if you see, what we will do, we will multiply each and every phasor by Vt upon Xd. Now why we will multiply each and every phasor by Vt upon Xd? Because you take this example here, you take this Ia into Xd into sin theta. So if I multiply it by Vt upon Xd, then what happens? This Xd, Xd will get cancelled. You will get equation Vt into Ia into sin theta. What is this? This will be your equation of Q. Similarly, this line which is drawn here is nothing but Ia xd cos theta. So if we multiply it by Vt upon xd, then we will get this axis is nothing but P. So let's see the changes in the data. After multiplying here, we will get this will be now I will show it here by the pointer. This will be what? Initially it was Vt. So we are multiplying it by Vt upon Xd. So this line will be Vt square upon Xd. I will keep Ia as it is. This is your Ia into Vt. I will keep it as it is. This will be what? This will be your Ei into Vt upon Xd. So what this will be? Ia into Vt into sin theta is nothing but your reactive power Q. And this is your line which is parallel to this line. So Ia Vt cos theta, we will represent this as an active component or active power P. Now what I will do, this is what is the same diagram that I have taken from the previous slide. Now let's take the mirror image of this. So this is exactly mirror image of this slide. Now here in the next slide, what we have seen, whatever the previous diagram is there, which was the mirror image of initial one. Now we will rotate this in a clockwise direction by 90 degree. So we will get this diagram. So we are using this diagram as a generator load capability curve. 
so this is your total diagram now what i did here this is o i have represented with some uh, let's say letters this is o this is r then this will be m this will be p now here the line which is drawn here this parallel line to the y axis or you can say to the q axis it is nothing but a constant p now this will be your constant p region we know that p equal to ia into vt cos theta now as vt is the constant so therefore this no the line no which is represented by vt square upon xd it will be a constant now this your vertical line mp at a fixed distance of ia into vt cos theta from this y axis this y axis is, is nothing but a q so i can say this vertical line mp at a fixed distance of ia into vt cos theta from your vertical line no it represents what it represents the locus of the operating point for constant p so you can say that whatever will be the region which is inside this which is inside this it will be a constant p the megawatt generator or megawatt of the generator is always positive regardless of a power factor of the output so first one is nothing but a constant p now again the same diagram has been shown but here now the next region is nothing but a constant q now how it is to be drawn we know q equal to ia vt sin theta as vt is constant so therefore the line no is a constant now the horizontal line qm if you see this is a horizontal line qm which is drawn at a distance of ia vt sin theta from this vertical line you can say this vertical line no so what it represents it will represent the uh, locus of a constant q so means what within which it will be operate safe now if the power factor that is cos theta equal to 1 then theta will be equal to 0 and q equal to 0 so when we have q equal to 0 then what is observed it is corresponding to your horizontal axis that is op so when we have you if you put here if you put here theta will be equal to 0 then what you will observe q will be equal to 0 so that line will be along x axis or you can say along your line op so this region whatever the line which is shown here i will draw it here again this region which is shown below this your uh, generator will work satisfactorily so this is called as constant q now let's have uh, the third loci is nothing but constant ei vt upon xd now here if you see i'll take this n as a center take this n m as the radius and with this radius if i draw the curve i will get a one curve this curve is nothing but what by drawing this curve what we will get now what is this radius n m this n m radius is nothing but what it is your ei vt upon xd or you can say with a constant ei which can be maintained the constant by holding a dc current ia so the region that you will get if you draw this within this region if your generator operates then we can say that it will be operate within a safe limit so this is the limit which is called as constant ei now let's take a next point which is nothing but a constant ia now this constant ia it is represented by this red color curve how it is drawn let's take o as a center om is nothing but a radius why we have taken om as a radius because this om indicates ia into vt so take om as a radius and if i draw the curve whatever curve we will get it is nothing but constant ia vt curve so if it is if your generator operates within this area within this limit then you can say the generator will be operated within a safe limit and the fifth locus is nothing but constant power factor now again i will take this o as a starting point or o as a center and i will take om i will take om which is nothing but what now if you see this om is nothing but fixed value here this will be a angle which is theta so it is a fixed power factor angle theta 
between your IA and the VT. Between your what? Between IA and VT. So therefore, this along this line we can say that what it represents? It represents a constant power factor here, which is shown here. This is the line which which shows constant power factor. So this is the total diagram. We will quickly revise this. This is the thing what within which if it operates, this is the constant P. Then this will be a constant power factor that we have discussed. This line is nothing but a constant Q region. Then this red color uh, curve, this red color curve is nothing but constant IA into VT curve. And this will be, you can say, constant EI VT upon XT. Constant EI VT upon XT. So these are the five locus which is to be there for a generator capability curve. Now the thing is that there are three important portions. First one is the armature current limit. Second one is the field current limit. Third one is the end region heating limit. Let's discuss the things one by one. First one is nothing but armature current limit. Now let's have a derivation for armature current limit. Now if you see from this diagram, now this will be your positive Q and we know that when the Q will be positive, when it will be undergone for over excitation. This will be a negative Q, that is it is under excitation. Now from this figure, IA into VT line with the radius as a OM, here this radius as a OM, it indicates a curve that curve is nothing but what? That curve here which is shown by a red color, that curve is nothing but armature heating limit. Now this will be uh, situated at right hand side of the generator capability curve. If we have the more value of the IA, then what is the case? Uh, losses is denoted by I square R or IA square R. So more the value of IA, more will be the losses. Losses will also going to be increased. Hence, the armature should carry a maximum current without exceeding the heating limit. In order to limit increasing temperature, energy associated with power loss must be removed. So let's have a look for the derivation. So this is the same diagram. Now we know what is a per unit complex power. It is S equal to under root of P square plus Q square, which will be equal to what? Which will be equal to Vt into Ia. Now if I square these, uh, this equation on both sides, then what I will get? P square plus Q square equal to Ia into Vt square. I think you have seen such kind of equation in the mathematics. This is the equation of a circle. So x square plus y square equal to r square. So what is this? This is nothing but r that is radius of the curve. So therefore with the radius r which is equal to ia into vt which is denoted by line om which is nothing but what? Your s that is it will be a MVN. Now let's discuss the second limit is nothing but a field current limit. Already we have shown this field current limit with the help of this curve constant EI VT upon XT. Now from the figure if you see EI VT of the uh, VI VT upon XD line having the radius NM. So let's take this as the radius NM that indicates the curve which is nothing but a field current limit. Now, which will be situated at top of the portion of the generator load capability curve. Now, let us consider the situation. We have a constant terminal voltage Vt and the field current is nothing but Ia. Hence, we have Ei which is limited to a maximum value obtained by a heating limit. Now, what is the equation of Ei? Already we have discussed this Vt plus Ia into bracket Ra plus Zxd. So, now here if you uh, neglect the rotor resistance that is RA or uh, armature resistance not a rotor resistance it is armature resistance RA then we will get equation as EI equal to VT plus IA into ZXD. So therefore we can draw the phasor diagram already we have shown this phasor diagram. Let us consider this is as point A, this is point B, this will be point C. Now from this phasor diagram what is line CB? If you see this is your line CB. What is line CB equal to? IA XD into cos theta. Uh, if you take a triangle ABC then we can say this is a line CB whose value is IA XD into cos theta. 
now if you see uh, if you take this triangle that is o b and c please remember triangle is o b c this is your angle delta so how you represent this cb this cb will be equal to what it is ei into sin delta it will be what ei into sin delta because this is delta this will be your hypotenuse ei and oa plus ab is nothing but this is your line so how you can write angle opposite to this angle opposite to this how you can represent ei into sin delta or in other words you can say sin delta will be equal to opposite cb upon hypotenuse so therefore if i equate these two what i will get i will get this equation ia xd cos theta equal to ei sin delta because left hand side is same so mark this as a equation number 1 so from this i can write ia cos theta will be equal to ei sin delta on xd now again if you take this uh, triangle here or if you take the above figure what is line ab let's take a triangle abc so from that tri triangle abc we can write line ab is nothing but ia xd sin theta and similarly if i take a triangle obc then how this line ab will be equal to already we know what is ob ob is nothing but what oa plus ab so here how i can find it out ab ab will be equal to total a ob minus oa so here it is written what is your ob how you can write ob this is your load angle delta this will be the adjacent so how you can write it is ei into cos delta so your ob will be equal to ei into cos delta this is very easy just you have to use your knowledge of trigonometry and what is your oa this oa is represented nothing but vt so we can write the expression for line ab will be equal to ob minus oa which is equal to ei cos delta minus vt now again we will equate these two ia xd sin theta equal to ei cos delta minus vt so we will get a expression of ia sin theta equal to just you shift this xt towards right hand side now what is active power p it is vt into ia into cos theta now initially from the uh, from the slide which was there earlier to this what was your ia into cos theta it was ei sin delta upon xd so therefore i can write here formula as p will be equal to vt ei sin delta upon xd so mark this as your equation number 3 Now and how I can write the reactive power Q? Q equal to V T into I A into sine theta. You know what is I A into sine theta? It is E I cos delta minus V T upon X D. So in place of this I A into sine theta, just I have substituted this term. Q equal to V T E I cos delta minus V T upon X D. So if I rearrange this equation, what I will get? Q equal to E I V T cos delta upon X D minus V T square upon X D. That is, if I shift this term minus uh, V T square upon X D towards left hand side, I will get this kind of equation. Now, what I will do? We will square and add equation number three and equation number four. So we know that what is equation number three? In a previous slide already we have written it. So just square and add, we will get P square. plus this is your left hand side so q plus vt square upon xd whole square which will be equal to what now uh, there was the term in equation previous equation it was like this ei vt upon xd into sin delta so we are taking the square of this so what we will get ei vt upon xd square sin square delta so by squaring and adding what we will get sin square delta plus cos square delta is nothing but a 1 so we will get equation as p square plus q plus vt square upon xd bracket square equal to ei vt upon xd whole bracket square so the same equation has been written here p square plus q plus vt square upon xd whole square equal to ei vt upon xd total bracket square now you know in the mathematics already we have seen such kind of formula x minus a bracket square plus y minus b 
bracket square equal to r square this is also one kind of uh, expression of a circle with the center as x equal to a and y equal to b and what is the radius or how you can write a center here that center will be equal to what 0 comma minus vt square upon xd now why it is minus vt square upon xd because here assuming that the generator terminal voltage vt and the synchronous machine xd is constant we will have only the term that is ei so that's why if you see the diagram the diagram was like this i will draw it here for the uh, understanding purpose this is your p this will be your q and if you remember this was the line here this was the line this is your n and this will be your m so you have taken n m as a radius and we have drawn this curve so this is nothing but your field current below with the radius what is this radius radius is nothing but vt square upon xd and if you compare it with the equation of a circle again you will get this minus vt square upon xd now my why minus so that's why it is represented here to the minus sign uh, minus y side or minus y side so therefore take nm as a radius and you will get this curve that is nothing but field current limit now the third one is nothing but it is uh, end region heating limit now if you see it will be a mirror image of the m which is operating point is m dash in under excited region the localized heating in the end region of the armature imposes the third limit on the operation of the synchronous machine this limit affects the capability of the machine under uh, ex existing or you can say exciting conditions which is illustrated in the figure here if you see this is your end region heating limit now as the machine enters into under excited region eddy currents induced by the system in the iron parts of the armature begin to increase hence i square r heating also increases in the end region of the armature so to limit such heating the machine manufacturers prepare a capability curve so whatever uh, the line which is shown m dash and n so i will draw it here this is nothing but your m dash and this is nothing but your n so whatever this region which is shown it is nothing but n region heating limit so this is what is about a generator loading capability of the curve thank you for watching this video